Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Morgan Lloyd, who's an independent insurance agent with Trailstone Insurance Group, and we'll be talking about protecting homeowners from natural disasters. Morgan, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me back on, Mike. I really appreciate it. You are welcome. And I know this is such a um, hot topic. And as I'm saying the words hot topic, I'm going, oh, pun not intended, but pun intended because natural disasters so many times in Colorado involve fire. And, you know, you think about, oh, that'll never happen. Well, it does, you know. And so let's uh, jump right into kind of what what your passion is for helping protecting homeowners from natural disasters and then kind of what your services to your clients in that respect. Yeah, I, I lived about two miles, or I lived about two miles from the, uh, really the epicenter of the Marshall Fire. And that was just an unbelievable experience. Uh, I don't think anybody expected a major town in the, Den- in the Denver Metro to partially burn to the ground. Um, mm-hmm. That was such a, I think, such a impactful experience for everybody that lives here in the north side of the city. And um, kind of in the wake of that, people were trying to understand what was going on with their insurance. And it, unfortunately, a lot of a lot of victims of the fire uh, discovered that they weren't adequately insured. I spoke with one uh, young man who lost his home. He just bought the home six months previous to the fire. And um, he was trying to understand how he could be underinsured by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. And so I, I reached out to him and said, offered to look at his insurance for him. And uh, it, I looked at his reconstruction cost estimate and the information, the details in this, in that estimate were completely wrong. And the reconstruction cost estimate is the basis for your insurance for, for your home. So yeah. we collect all the information about your house, uh, put it into our calculators. And um, that gives us a, a you know a rough estimate of what it would cost to rebuild the home. And uh, the, his agent had failed to do that. Literally failed to actually do an accurate reconstruction cost estimate. It was just well. L- let me ask a question about that one point right there, and and I'm glad we're not talking about specific names and things like that, so we can speak freely. But that particular policy that you're looking that you were looking at, do you feel like it was oh they just oops didn't do it or here comes an agent knowing that this person is shopping insurance and they want to bring in the lowest premium. So the way to do it is to put in a, in, you know, deflated value so that the premium comes in low and they win the deal. And then lo and behold, here comes a fire. Now you're underinsured. Could that be a potential possibility? You know, I'm I'm really a believer in uh, that old saying of don't, uh, don't ascribe to malice what can be easily described, you know, ascribed to incompetence. I think that that's probably what it was. Yeah. Just either a new agent or somebody in a very big hurry who didn't yeah. really care about the job. Either, or, either way, whatever yeah. the, the point was, um, this he person was, was yeah. dramatically underinsured by probably three to four hundred thousand dollars on a nice oh, good night. He's and, a young guy and he, you know, he's he's out of luck though. He sunk his life savings into that home. And yeah. So after wow. speaking to him for about, you know. 30, 45 minutes about this, just trying to, and I was, I was actually pretty shocked. I was pretty blown away that somebody could have done that. Um, I put the word out there to, you know, to try to explain how we are calculating people's reconstruction cost estimates. And um, I really got, you know, involved in the, in at least trying to understand what's going on after the aftermath of the fire in terms of reconstruction and um, you know, how to at least, try to structure people's policies in a, in a better way going forward in, throughout this entire market for the next, for the foreseeable future while, you know, reconstruction costs are going to be elevated. Yeah. Well, you know, number one, this never should have happened. Number two, people need to be aware of it to prevent it from happening to them. And then like you just said, reconstruction costs, those numbers fluctuate dramatically over time, but especially in these times we're in where, you know, you hear, oh man, I I ordered a couch and it's going to take a year to come in. What? Uh, It should be like here next Saturday kind of a thing. So we know that the construction industry is in crazy demand, which means costs are up. So Um, It kind of makes me think this too, when you're looking, you know, here's your, your client, they, 
they, they just get their house and they get their insurance and they sign papers and they just think they're hunky dory. What do they know? You know, like me, what do I, what do I know? I'm, I, I've got my home insurance. Yay. I'm, I don't read the fine print. I don't know what to even read. I'm trusting the person that structured up this thing. So talk a little bit about that, you know, like, yes, you don't want to be an idiot and not read papers, but at the same time, what do you know about all these numbers? That's where you need to trust someone that will put it together the right way. You need, and my job, the biggest part of my job, I think, is just giving people the information that they need. Um, so the first thing you should ask your agent for, whether it's, you know, whether you want to get a hold of me later on, or you want to get a hold of your agent or another agent, ask for the reconstruction cost estimate, that particular document, look over it, make sure that everything in that document is accurate, at least to the best of your knowledge. It'll have detailed description of your house, um, the materials, type of materials used to build it, depending on, on the detailed level of detail of the reconstruction cost estimate. Um, it'll have the quality of your kitchens or your kitchen or a number of kitchens. Um, it'll have the information about your bathrooms, the flooring, the siding, the, the roof, everything. Look over it, make sure it's accurate. If it isn't, if it's missing things that you think are important, make sure your agent understands that you add that to the reconstruction cost estimate. That's the base thing, base number for your policy. Once you have that, I strongly recommend everybody in Colorado right now gets the maximum dwelling extension dwelling replacement extension. It has different names with different carriers, um, but generally we call it something like guaranteed dwelling extension. And that is a percentage above that number that we got from the reconstruction cost estimate that can be used for reconstruction of your property at that location. So some and carriers- that's a big, So I want to make a, I want to have you clarify that point because um, back about oh, 15, 20 years ago, I um, was in the mortgage business. So I, I know what that number is you're talking about. And I think, that it, and this was many, many years ago, like I said, but um, the number that sticks in my mind is 125%. So if your house is worth a hundred thousand, then if it burned down and you need 125 to rebuild it, then, okay, you're good to go. So talk a little bit about that, that number. So even if the number is a little off, you know, like, oh, the construction cost estimate is X and it's a little bit low, this little gap protection will protect you. So what, what do you guys do and what are some of the numbers that other carriers provide? Yeah. So every carrier is different, what they offer. Um, a lot of carriers will only be at 20%. And uh, so that everyone understands condos are different than single family homes in this respect. It's critically important to understand that, to look at your policy. A few carriers will offer 25% extensions for the dwelling coverage on condos. Um, that's a whole nother can of worms. The, what I'll be talking about here is, for the most part, single-family homes. Yep. Um, so, what we what I recommend is that everybody get the maximum extension available. Some carriers will offer only twenty percent if that's all they offer, and that's what you want to go with. Go with that carrier, or go with that carrier and get the twenty percent extra. Some carriers will offer fifty percent. Some will offer one hundred percent. Some will offer guaranteed dwelling replacement. If you can get guaranteed dwelling replacement, go with that. Mm -hmm. It won't cost very much more. Um, Companies like Nationwide offer that, which we sell. Um, but you know, other companies like Safeco, with certain policies with companies like Travelers, we can offer 100% extension. So, mm. if you have 400,000 in, in your dwelling coverage, that'll give you $800,000 to rebuild at that location. You can't walk away with that money, but you can rebuild yeah. as it was. Yeah, and that's only for reconstruction as it was. So that kind of leads to the next topic, which is ordinance and law coverage. Um, and I know that can be, but even that dwelling extension can be kind of complicated. Um, but you know, it's it's really important to max that out. To get the most. But, but even if you test. knew, hey, make sure when you're setting up your policy to ask for this thing that you've never heard of, reconstruction cost. Uh, okay, well, show me that. And even if you're looking over that, going, well, okay, numbers, I don't really get it, but okay, they look pretty accurate. Okay, that's good. At least I'm ahead of the game because I've never known to ask about that before. But then this dwelling coverage extension concept, if it's whatever percent, the most you can get, then that gives you an extra level of comfort to know that you're taken care of. So now, now that's a great piece, you know, that I think a lot of people don't even realize they should have been doing. Unfortunately, in this market, it's essential. It's not, um, it's not even a peace of mind thing at this point, because the reconstruction cost estimates from what I'm seeing compared to the estimated real reconstruction costs after the Boulder fire or after the, you know, the Marshall fire are totally out of whack. I mean, 
we're looking at maybe for, and it totally depends on the home and the quality of the finishings, and the location and everything else. But uh, the reconstruction cost estimates come in, you know, 60% of, you know, $400, $450 a square foot, what we're seeing in Boulder. So, um, yeah, uh, with some carriers, they're doing a better job of just really increasing that dwelling coverage to make up for that if they don't have the extensions available. But um, if, you know, just, just get as much coverage as you can, it's reasonable. Um, and the, usually those extra coverages aren't too expensive. Um, you know, talking one, $200 a year to on a, you know, $2,000 a year policy for a home. So it makes sense to, to definitely max those out. But it's important to understand also that that does not cover ordinance and law changes. So as, as codes change, you know, as laws change about reconstruction of homes over, over the years, um, that would not be covered. That's excluded by homeowners insurance policies. So you need to have an endorsement that will kick in more money in the event that you need to rebuild to an updated code. And that's ordinance and law coverage. Mm-hmm. Um, depending on the age of your home and your location and what you may know about your local code changes, um, you would likely want to increase beyond the default 10% um, after maybe 10 to 15 years, go to, you know, 20, 25%. If your home is in, built in the eighties or seventies or sixties, and it needs a lot of updates, if it were in the event that need to be rebuilt, um, you got to think about the increased cost of insulation, windows, um, plumbing, electrical, all those things. Those would not be covered by the dwelling coverage. Those would not be covered by the, uh, by the dwelling extension even with guaranteed dwelling replacement. So you need to increase that ordinance and law coverage to you know, 25 to 50% on a 50 year old home be, would be a good choice. Does that make sense? It, it totally does. And you know, the one thing that does make sense to me is there's a lot that goes into this and people might not understand it. And please guide me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, because I have no clue, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, you just need someone that can, tell you and guide you and and speak logically and and understand this and that's a big big um you know opportunity but a big problem like the one you mentioned about the person that was severely underinsured yeah it's unfortunate that we kind of have to be in that position of 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 trust i i wish it was simpler you know i wish these policies were simpler but having kind of so much variation in, in policies available to homeowners or to you know anybody who wants to buy insurance gives more opportunities on pricing and, and um, just more market opportunities in general. So it's, it's unfortunate that every single policy isn't guaranteed dwelling replacement with some kind of automated uh, ordinance and law coverage yep. so that everybody knew that they were guaranteed to be covered. Unfortunately, it's not like that. And um, so, so reconstruction cost estimate gap extension coverage, ordinance of law, these are all new things to me and I'm, I'm a homeowner. What, uh, what are some of the other things that would help protect homeowners from natural disasters and make sure they've got the best coverage? Yeah. So that's, you know, worst case scenario, we're kind of planning for, you know, if, if the house burned down and you had to leave for an extended period of time while it got rebuilt or just had significant damage that had to be fixed and took a long time to get back into the home for it to be safe for you to go back, you need to have um, loss of use coverage. Now it's included in pretty much every homeowner's policy to some extent, including condo policies, but you really need to look at the terms of, of that policy or of that, that coverage. Um, I've seen, especially on condo policies, I've seen coverages as low as $6,000 for loss of use. And that's an unbelievably small amount to cover for you. But what this coverage covers is if you have to leave your property due to a covered loss, you can stay in the hotel, you can get takeout for while you're in the hotel. All those additional costs, your additional cost for driving uh, farther to work back, um, any of those kind of small additional expenses. And then it also covers your apartment or house while they're rebuilding your house. So this means you don't have to pay for rent. Yeah, six and grand in that example would go about a minute and a half, It's uh, I would yeah. suspect. Yeah, maybe a month, month and a half. And that's just egregious, but I've seen that. And um, I've seen with homeowners policies, which normal single family home policies, um, it's not uncommon to see maybe actual loss sustained, which is the best coverage you can get and what you should get if you can. Um, but I've seen that for like 12 months. Mm. Well, that, that's not going to cut it. You need to have 24 months minimum. Um, obviously, 24 months is actually the maximum that you can get in Colorado with most carriers. Uh, but get it, get 24 months. Um, or with a lot of carriers, you'll have a dollar amount. And what I recommend there is just... You know, figure out what it would cost for your family to 
live. Um, if your house burned down, you know, the additional cost of hotel for a couple months and, uh, you know, all the takeout and things like that. Plus, you know, an apartment for, for, you know, 22 to 24 months or a house, if you need a single family home mm-hmm. and just make sure you have that dollar amount, make sure the terms are 24 months, not 12 months. You just got to make sure. Uh, and you'll see that. I mean, it's, it's, uh, again, these are just points that, that are just, I feel new because as a homeowner for 30, 40 years, these are not things that I would know to think of. So this is so timely and helpful. Um, one thing that I did personally um, this past, oh, right around Christmas time is, um, and so tell me if this is, would be helpful too. I took my phone and I turned on the video and I slowly walked through the entire house and I filmed everything in our house so that, you know, here's all the books, here's our instruments, here's our computer equipment. Because if anything ever happened, I don't remember what I have and why I have 4,000 pictures laying around. I can have this video and pause it and take a screenshot and whatever. So talk a little bit about documenting things like that. Well, that's definitely a good idea. Um, And the more detailed you can be with your documentation, the better. Um, you know, look inside of drawers, uh, make sure you get to have an accurate accounting, or at least as far as possible, have a reasonably accurate accounting of all of your personal possessions. And then if you can try to figure out how much it would cost to replace them new. So you might think, Hey, I got a beat up old fridge. Um, and you could cover it as a beat up old fridge, but you know, maybe the minimum, but, um, if you want to buy, you know, a new fridge, it would replace the old one, at least comparable fridge to what you had. You got to think about that, you know, new cost your, your appliances, your, your furniture, your clothes, your kids, toys, um, think about all those things and get a dollar amount and then make sure you have that much coverage in your terms of, for your, uh, your personal property coverage, or it'll be something like a contents coverage, um, on, on your homeowner's policy. And then make sure that you have as an endorsement on your policy, replacement cost contents or, brand new belongings. So it'll, it'll have some kind of terminology like that. Just ask your agent, make sure you can have replacement cost on your, uh, on your personal property. Um, and that, that'll save you an enormous amount of, of pain and suffering of realizing that you lost all your stuff and you don't even have the money to, to replace it in the event of a loss. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of carriers, a lot of, um, a lot of agents to save money won't, won't, won't give their clients, um, replacement cost on personal property. And, uh, you, know, you wouldn't think about it. You wouldn't really look at that. Yeah, you really wouldn't. You think house is my structure, but there's a lot of stuff in your house. Like, like for me, we probably have 20 plus instruments. Well, that's not your dwelling. So that you, you need to make sure that's covered. And with things like musical instruments, jewelry, sometimes guns, tools, um, you know, you, you would need to have an extra endorsement for most carriers yep. to make sure that you have those covered. You'd have that detailed listing of yes. what they are and what they're worth or what they would cost to replace. And you'd have that extra endorsement to cover that. Like yeah. I know. I know for me, um, it, it was, I think if the phrase is called scheduled, so yeah, we have, we've got it scheduled with jewelry and with all the instruments. And now here's something that um, I I'm fuzzy on um, a hot tub. So that's not touching or connected to the dwelling. Does that need to be scheduled or is that part of the, the house coverage? Yeah, that'd be covered under the house if it's connected to plumbing. Things like uh, water heaters, um, hot tubs, bathtubs, you know, all that kind of stuff is uh, if it's attached to the tub. Really, you're thinking about things you could pick up, throw out the window. Um, Got it. If, okay. you could, if you're strong enough to throw your fridge out the window. Then, whoo. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, things you, if you pick your house up and turn it on the side and shake it and dump everything that would fall out, generally those things would be... Um, you need to cover those under personal property coverage, whereas everything else would be covered under. Uh, well, I th- everything we've talked about here is things that whether it's a natural disaster or not, you need to know about, but the trigger of a natural disaster like fire here in Colorado has made a lot of people realize, Ooh, I need to, I'm, I'm in trouble or I want to make sure I'm not in trouble. So, you know, th- these are things that you should be doing, whether a natural disaster could hit or not. Um, any final thoughts on this before we wrap up with anyone listening to this might want to call Morgan and just kind of get a second opinion, double check on their policy, but uh, any final thoughts and then what's the best way to reach out and connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. In terms of, of kind of final thoughts on this, um, you know, there's uh different carriers are much different on pricing on, on these kinds of, of coverages. So I've seen a lot that we're able to really increase people's coverages and by really by hundreds of thousands of dollars and still save them money 
for switching from carriers that you know maybe are charging a lot in this market. Maybe they're big national companies that uh, do a lot of advertising on the Super Bowl, but uh, they're not very competitive in this particular market because they don't like the fire risk generally, um, or for whatever reason they're just not not competitive. So we can get people much much better coverage on their homeowners policy with a few of the companies that we work with. Mm. Um, and still save them sometimes really substantial amounts of money. Um, that so we even use. even if it's like, um, hey, it's the same amount of money, but look at all this extra coverage you've got. That's a win. But if you can yeah. get better coverage and save a buck or two, double yeah. win. So that's yeah. that's awesome. And it's amazing. It's amazing that um, you know people get stuck with. And I, I understand it. That it's kind of nobody wants to think about insurance. Nobody. Yeah. It is the least exciting thing to shop for. But. Right. Um, <laughs> and it can be it can be tedious, especially if you're you know getting a ton of calls about it. But um, you know it, you can save a substantial amount of money sometimes and get yeah. much better coverage. Then that's the way to go. But yeah, to get a hold of me, um, just just call or text me seven two zero nine zero two five eight one eight, or email me at m l l o y d at trailstoneinsurance dot com, or reach out to me on Facebook. Um, it's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Excellent. Well, Morgan, thanks so much for coming on. It was really informative and helpful in all the content we covered today. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate you. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.